Well, I'll tell you, first and foremost, this women's doubles matchup is really intriguing. This is a regular final, right? What we've seen, the only difference is it's Annalie Waters playing alongside Leah Jansen. Now, these are two women that love to play aggressively. Both, we'll call them somewhat al alphas out on the court. So Leah Jansen is pressed a little bit in this partnership because she plays that secondary role, the setup role. She'll still look for her shots. Don't think she's going anywhere, but it's definitely a little bit of a different flow for Anna Lee Waters and Leah Jansen. But the other side, you want to talk about continuity? Well, there's probably no one on the women's game who has more continuity on the court alongside one another between Lucy Kovalova and Callie Jo Smith. They are forces. They know each other's game very, very well. Look for Anna Lee Waters and Leah Jansen to potentially try and go at Callie Jo Smith on the backhand side. That's somewhere that a lot of teams look to. To your point, Cameron, Lucy Kovalova and Callie Smith have played together over 100 matches. That is a duel that has come together in early 2022 in the PPA Tour. They've won several gold medals, a women's duo that you don't want to match up with. However, if you're Annalie Waters, you're familiar with this partnership. You've got the firepower of Leah Jansen, though she's playing that reset side. You're very, very familiar with Leah Jansen. Jansen in her game. She is taking a huge step forward in her recent play with her dedication off the court. What are you seeing right now about Leia Jansen's game that's impressing you? I'm a poker guy. She's going all in. I mean, she has got the, she's in the gym, she's on the court, she's got the vision coach. She's taking her game to the next level. And let's be clear, playing with Annalie Waters is easy, but it's hard also. So you have to balance it out when you're playing with the best player in the world. It is a delicate balance. Can Leia Jansen find it? Lucy Kovalova will start us off for the Mashers in blue. Right away, Leia Jansen takes advantage of a net bounce. Yes, and I expect him to go a lot to the back end of Callie Smith, like Cam said. One, zero. And she has been creating some more offense than normal throughout this weekend. Can she continue? Yeah. Annalie Waters finds the corner. Where did you see her creating offense? Well, I called the match, uh, her first match yesterday, and she was using a little one-handed flip zero. and an occasional two-handed backhand off of the bounce speed up with it being very effective as well. So can uh, that, that is a hole if there is one in her game that we talk about occasionally, but I haven't seen it too much this weekend. Jansen with a backhand roll. She gets it right out in front of Lucy Kovalova. Cameron Blackwood telling us it's starting to mist out there on the court, something to keep an eye on. Hopefully it doesn't get too wet to put us into a rain delay. We'll keep our eyes on that. A little June gloom, Michelle. June gloom, Southern California. A couple of days we've gotten the rain. Three, one. The sun yesterday, yesterday though. Jansen all over that play. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but Leah Jansen starting on the left with Annalie on the right. I feel like throughout the weekend, we've actually seen the opposite. It. Yes, and throughout the three events, they have done quite a bit of switching back and forth. And it's the ability of Annalie Waters to be offensive from the right side. She can play both. A great luxury to have, as you see there with the big two-hander in the middle. And the thing is, is Leia Jansen prefers the left side. So the fact that Annalie can be offensive from the right allows her to be uh, more comfortable on her preferred side, even though she's probably going to be a little softer and more of a setup from that left. A lot on the line for the New Jersey Fives. If they win this tournament, they are in to Monday night's Super Final, the season finale. Tonight will be the championship for San Clemente. Monday night is the accumulation of all events.
Otherwise, the LA Mad Drops are in, so who do you think is scoreboard watching from afar? I would guess the LA Mad Drops are on the edge of their seats watching this one. Wide for Kovalova. Lucy trying to find that backhand counter on just one hand alone. Tough when it becomes that right hip area. Couldn't quite get her paddle flipped. Did it hit the post? Oh, I think it skipped first. Oh, man. So sometimes man. from the low position, it'll skip, and then that second bounce is what the one you see. So I think that the ball was short, even though it looked pretty good on camera, didn't it? It looked real pretty. Shy of trickling over, Jansen and Waters off to a big lead on their side, up seven points. Timeout is called on the side of the Milwaukee Mashers over in the blue. One would expect as much. We will take a timeout of our own and be back with the rest of this women's double duel. Tennis Channel's coverage of Major League Pickleball is brought to you in part by Knockaround Sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank, and by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. The New Jersey Fives off to quite the lead here in this opening game as we check in now with the fourth member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, to break down the coin toss. Cameron. Nine, yes, during the coin toss, we had New Jersey Fives. They won the toss, and they chose to react for mixed doubles. And the Mashers went ahead and chose women's doubles. Then the New Jerseys, they said, I want to receive, and Mashers chose the side. So I think it's interesting because the Fives have been choosing their men's doubles first. So I don't know if uh, they wanted to rattle, rattle them a little bit with choosing women's doubles first. So far, so good for the New Jersey Fives, putting their women's doubles team out first. They had no choice, as Cameron Two mentioned. Two. Annalie Waters and Leah Jansen off to the races, but we'll see how it impacts the men's, as they've been used to going out first all tournament long. So we'll see how Hayden Patrickwin and James Ignatowicz come out. And we will have an end change because the fives out to the 11-2 lead. We will change ends 
where the men's doubles teams will resume based on their respective ends. What's the discussion right now for Lucy Kovalova and Callie Smith on the side of Milwaukee? You're trailing this big opening game. How do you even advise them at this point? Uh, yes, it, it is a it is a tall task uh, uh, being being down 11-2. Uh, but yes, you you have to get to the kitchen, work the point a little bit more. We've had Annalie Waters really coming in hot from the back of the court forward with poaching and aggressive shots. So you have to neutralize that, get into more some, some more structured rallies, and see if you can't pick some spots to be aggressive. Uh, but you know, with that big two-hander uh, from Annalie Waters, really, it, it's almost like having a righty and a lefty out there the power that she can create on that Matches backhand side and it just makes the comfort level of Leia Jansen uh, at an all-time high. She can pretty much do whatever she wants to out there. We've seen some nice speed ups and some nice soft stuff from her. Yeah, we haven't talked enough about Annalie Waters. 16 triple crowns for her. Each triple crown for a year of age that she has. 16 years old. Good article about her out right now in Sports Illustrated. Check it out if you haven't had a chance already. Pally Smith with a feathery touch and a feels like a must win situation for them. If you can beat Annalie Waters in one of these games, you're in good shape. Doesn't look like that might be the case here, but we'll see. And there actually may be some susceptibility elsewhere for the New Jersey Fives, right? That men's doubles team, James Ignatowicz alongside Hayden Patrick Quinn, that could be a little dangerous against Matt Wright. And Andre Deescu. Andre Deescu has been playing some of the best pickleball that we have seen to this point. So that is a duo you might be able to find a win if you're the Masters. Those mixed doubles for the Masters are also pretty formidable. Long for Kovalova. And that's the kind of pressure that Jansen and Waters put on you. They force you into a, playing a perfect game. And that's a tough challenge. No room for error here for Milwaukee. Yeah, I talked about some <laughs> more structured points at the kitchen, and then they get up uh, get up to the kitchen, have a few dinks, and then Annalie Waters creates offense from almost nothing. So uh, definitely a, a, a tall task with the score and the opponents for the Mashers. <laughs> Leia Jansen with the angle, waving goodbye, I think, at the end of that one. I just like the preparation there. Well poised, well prepped with her feet, held her position, and waited for the ball. She's in the midcourt, close to the baseline, decides to drive again, catching Kovalova off guard and jamming her up on the backhand side. Great scramble from the fives. Rare miss for Annalie Waters. A couple of former tennis players on the side of Milwaukee in the blue, Lucy Kovalova. Played in college, as did Callie Jo Smith, D1, University of Utah for Callie. Wichita State Point. for Lucy Kovalova. They have 16. Buries it. Yeah, the shake and bake from Annalie Waters, the self shake and bake on her own right, too. These two are also so damaging from the baseline. You've seen a lot of the drives off of Leia Jansen's paddle, but Annalie Waters will do it as well. And she doubles up again. I mean, she just comes in so hot. Her forward movement and her pressure from her court positioning is just as good as the quality of her shots. And we, I believe, we have a time. We'll have a time out. Okay. 
I thought it was a timeout, but it looks like the Mashers are going to stay on court. What a finish for Leia Jansen. She was there for the cleanup. And she was there for the finger wag as well. Big H is sitting on the sidelines. She took one out of his book. Leia Jansen. Two points away from taking game one for the fives. This is the best of four game series. We start with gender doubles and then we move to mixed doubles in the Dream Breaker singles format if we must. No, that's not the way you want to go down for Callie Jo Smith. Book hold is called on Milwaukee. So Annalie Waters and Leia Jansen come out with a statement. 21-6 win over Milwaukee. Their second straight semifinal appearance. And so far, so good for the Vibes. Annalie Waters, the 16-year-old sensation, throttled Milwaukee in their women's doubles matchup. We check in now with Cameron Blackwood to talk it over with Leah and Annalie. Thanks, Michelle. AL, a really seasoned and successful team in Lucy and Cali on the other side. What's the game plan going in? I saw you talking with your mom, Lee, as well. Yeah, I mean, we've played this team many times outside of MLP, just never together. I think we played them at the first MLP. Had a solid game plan going into it. This morning, I think me and Leia were feeling it on the practice court, so coming in super confident. Um, and I just feel like our team feels confident in general, so we just went out there with a bang. You guys do look very confident, made quick work of that one. What was the discussion with your team before stepping out for this semi? I mean, for me and Anna Lee, we kind of played tentative yesterday, so we wanted to come out swinging, and I believe we did that. Fives take the first point. Michelle, back to you. Thanks, Cameron. So now we move on to men's doubles, who we introduced you to during warm-ups the first time. James Ignatowicz on your screen on the near side. Matt Wright on the far side in the royal blue t-shirt. And James's partner, Hayden Patrickwin, a very feisty youngster. Matt Wright playing with Andre Daskew. Let's get to know James Ignatowicz once again, the former Division I tennis player out of Vanderbilt University. He has taken his attention full time to pickleball. Very active feet. Keep a lookout for that. Hayden Patrickwin, 16 years old, not too long ago did he turn pro in 2022. The GM and part owner of this team, Ryan Harwood, said when they were drafting this team. They had the fourth round. He just
just barely made the cut for the premier level, yes, Hayden Patrick Quinn, but they saw the upside in a player like him. You've talked about it all weekend long. No, His upside, yes, what do you think on that selection and where Hayden Patrick Quinn could go against Matt Wright and they ask you? Yeah, and it's interesting. You think back to MLP Mesa and he felt as if he underperformed. I remember Lee Waters having the conversation saying, you belong here, you just have to believe it. And that was a big adjustment for him going into Daytona. He stepped up his own game as you now see Andre Deescu, but he absolutely has performed time and time again. I don't know how many times I've said it this weekend, but I do not bet against Hayden Patrick Quinn anymore because I have been so impressed with his hand speed, his ability to create opportunities, and he has been so good, even though he is in a big stage right now. And you talked about it, Adam. That same progression for you and his upside. Andre Deescu, you mentioned his tennis background, Game former two, pro tennis, tennis player, played zero, a couple zero. years on the ATP Tour. We are underway, Matt Wright, the server. attacks the body of Ignatowicz. So from the early point, you can see James Ignatowicz, great to him backhand roll. How do you negate the amount of spin and pace after the bounce? You reach in, you take it out of the air. Deescu doing that perfectly. Countered back that time, did Ignatowicz take back the point and the serve tied up early. Right now, let's go. One, one. I'm actually surprised that Matt Wright is starting this match on the right. Yesterday, this team played very well with Matt on the left. And after this point, I think I know why. Oh, what a fine for Ignatowicz on the one-hander. Why is that? So I am looking, Andre Deescu, a phenomenal dinker. I am looking for them to grind James Ignatowicz with dinks and then trust Matt Wright's hands that are right in front of James Ignatowicz. So uh, I like this adjustment. Well, and Deescu can also use his length like we've already seen to be able to negate, take the time away from James Ignatowicz. That's another reason to take the ball out of the air. Takes a kiss off the tape. Yes, and Deescu, 6'5", an imposing figure out there, but he's actually known for more of a well-rounded, consistent game uh, than being an overwhelming power player. A big that's out from Matt Wright. So a couple of chirpy teams on both sides, something to pay attention to. These guys can get feisty. Matt Wright being the bigger chirper on his side in the blue and Hayden Patrick Quinn look, look out for his finger wags as Cameron mentioned and Natowich can get into it. A bit calmer this tournament in my opinion, James has been. shoulder of Hayden Patrick Quinn, one of the more undersized players. Oh. What a fine James Ignatowicz 
goes cross court, gets the winner. Yeah, beautiful inside out. He held the paddle to the last second and at a very high clip, 70, 80 percent plus, he's going to take that up the middle. So a nice job by him of mixing up his spots. Just long for Daskew, New Jersey on top by three. You can see just a millisecond of hesitancy in the middle right now for the Mashers. You watch Matt Wright kind of take that ball from well behind himself as Daskew started to shift for the Ernie. Daskew mentioned it, playing some of the best pickleball of his career. Five, seven. 34 years old out of Palm Beach, Florida. Oh. Just long. Yeah, it looked like Dayescu was not convinced, but Matt Wright shook his head in agreement, I believe. So, Milwaukee Masters, you are challenging the out call. Masters yes. will challenge the, that out call. You're challenging the out call. Thank you. Dayescu felt that was fives. Are you confirming in. your out call? And giving the fives a chance to confirm their out call was... Yes. <laughs> Michelle, it's not a great situation when you decide to challenge and the other team's bench cheers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's mental warfare yeah, yeah, exactly, out there right now in this exactly. team format. <laughs> Seriously. Make you second guess yourself. Right, so uh, I don't expect this one to get overturned from the reaction from the fives. And uh, Matt Wright played a little tennis at the University of Michigan in a three-time All-Big Ten selection. Uh, so this man uh, has some hand-eye coordination on his side. He sure does. Die-hard Michigan sports fan. Ironically, his favorite movie is The Hoosiers. No reflection of <laughs> yeah, Indiana right. there, but after video review, the, the ball call was verdict. out. Ball was confirmed out. You guys the pointed it out. The fives were thrilled that they challenges. would burn a you challenge there. Remain. They being the Your Milwaukee Jersey Mashers in blue, they were very confident remain. on that we out call. So you see James Blake in the corner there. Serving. Bottom left hand on your screen, one of the owners of the Milwaukee Mashers in blue. He was decent at tennis. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I used to love Above watching average, James, I'd say. James Blake just absolutely pounded the ball. So much fun to watch. So a New York Times best-selling author. He's a philanthropist. He does it all. Mark Lazary, a good friend of his, he said it just kind of came together at the perfect time for him to enter the ownership group. Great spot from Dayescu catching James Ignatowicz transitioning, one of the weaker parts of his game, self-admitted. Ignatowicz, that's one of those new elements. He had to learn that shot coming from the tennis ranks, that one hand backhand flick. That one got a little lucky with some help from the net. And a couple couple loose points here. I think right now the grind of Andre Dayescu cross court and the offense of Ignatowicz in favor of the fives early on. Nice wrist location there for JSQ. Just enough turn to be able to get that ball low on the hip of Hayden Patrick Quinn. Good run here for Milwaukee. They need it to even out the series. And they're two points away. What's causing the run? Oh, well, just, you know, a couple loose errors there from the fives. Hayden Patrick, when I think, was thinking of being offensive with that sh shot, he changed his mind. And often when you change your mind, you make an error. for your partner as he chases the lob down. You come in and poach to clean up. The fives, the first team to 11. We will change ends and take a quick break and be back with the rest of this one.
in this game, they, they reset each game, so you have a timeout available. Yeah, one left. Court, James Ignatowicz and Patrick Quinn taking a three-point lead, a legend of the game in the stands, waving in the white. Adam, you have some context on that woman yes. right there. Alex Hamner, uh, former regular pro, now senior pro. She has quite a few titles and quite a few accolades in her career. These players looking for a major league pickleball title. It would be their first. Not James Ignatowicz, though. He was a winner of the Newport Championship. But the Fives have never won a Major League Pickball Championship, nor have the Milwaukee Mashers. Punch down the middle for Hayden Patrickwin. Michelle, I think you hit on something, too. I think at the beginning of Major League Pickleball, after these teams were drafted, you would have expected to see the New Jersey Fives immediately into the finals. And the second team would be the Seattle Pioneers, but the Fives have yet to make a final. Two straight semifinal appearances, though, so they are trying to get that one step ahead in the finals in San Clemente. from Matt Wright, though, as he goes to a single foot. Watch how this comes off of his paddle. The forehand slide redirects that. James Ignatowicz can't put anything together against that kind of offense. James Ignatowicz leaves it flat for Matt Wright to pounce on. Yeah, and Andre Deescu within a nice initial speed up, reaching into the kitchen, using his length to his advantage. Long for Ignatowicz, and just like that, it's a one-point game. Yes, and, and uh, Andre Dayescu a little further back off the kitchen line. He got the ball down, and with a little less pace than James Ignatowicz uh, was expecting, and that's why he sails his counter long. There are the hands of Hayden Patrickwin. Yeah, and his ability to recoil. We talk about compact strokes, but Hayden Patrickwin does such a solid job generating pace in such a short period and space in time. Yeah, some really nice hand-eye coordination from Hayden Patrick, when former baseball player. He is very used to tracking the ball, and it's showing up here in his pickleball game. Wide, the fives recover a two-point lead. No shortage of confidence for the young Hayden Patrick, when California native. Lots of friends and family in the crowd, he says. out as he's starting to slide. Oh! Uh, 
What a recovery from Daskew. Nearly gets burned on the Ernie. And the chirping begins. Yes, and the second. That's out from Matt Wright, letting him know that ball is well wide. Really nice point from all, all four fellas. And it's unique to see the left side players being targeted in this match. Let's go, Matt Wright. Bring the energy out there. The fans love it. Matt Wright, 46 years old and still establishing dominance here over the youngsters. What a game so far. Matt Wright also plays with Lucy Kovalova, his wife, who is also on the team. I mentioned that, won the 2018 Nationals in mixed doubles. I believe Lucy and Matt just spend a good amount of time together. They've been dating for a good period of time. Special friends, Cam. Special friends. Special friends. <laughs> That's my favorite line. <laughs> Don't forget, coming up today at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 Eastern, it is the premier level final. The Seattle Pioneers await their opponent, the winner of this one, the Milwaukee Mashers or the New Jersey Fives. Fives had a good handle on this men's doubles matchup. And now, Dayescu and Matt Wright putting an end to that for now. Tied up, 15 points apiece. quickly recover a two-point lead. Well, you can try and execute at a high level, or you can become that much more the aggressor. And right now, the New Jersey Fives are choosing the latter of the two since that timeout. Swinging back and forth. Yeah, nice job by Andre de Escu on a several shot exchange. He was not going to finish that one. And one, he started the fire and finished a couple shots later. Nice job, Andre. What a shot from Matt Wright. He is pointing and saying something. Probably not repeatable for air, but what a play. Well, I'll tell you what, now that I don't have to play him anymore, I like him a lot more, so <laughs> that's for sure. It's a really nice change up there from Dayescu. He was going with that cross court battle, sends one, just catching that momentum and that rhythm off just enough to create the misty. 18 17. James Ignatowicz punches right back. Tied up, 18-18. Yeah, drop attempts floating uh, a little too much there for the mashers, allowing the fives to take those balls out of the air and keep them back at the backcourt. It's almost identical what we just saw from Dayescu. Now Ignatovich getting that same ball right at the foot. 19-18. couldn't be on three. Nice hand speed from Hayden Patrick Wynn, forcing Andre into an awkward third shot there. Andre Deescu finds the middle. 
middle, catches Patrick when reaching on the backhand. Game point for Milwaukee. for Hayden Patrick Quinn right now on the backhand side through the middle. He looks for it on the poach and instead finds it on the counter. Reminder, Milwaukee's on the freeze, as are the fives. Big finishing touch for Andre Daskew. Yeah, tough break for Magnatowicz, who was in a perfect position down low uh, with the knee bend, just miscontacted that ball a little bit, leaving it high, and Andre Deescu putting it down at the feet. Just wide, and wow, an even series here between the New Jersey Fives and the Milwaukee Mavs. Andre Deescu and Matt Wright have the crowd on their feet. We will talk it over with them after this. What a game. Andre Deescu and Matt Wright just stole a win from Ignatowicz and Patrick Quinn. It was a controversial call on the last ball of the game. I don't know, guys. This could be an in ball for the fives. They're not going to like seeing this replay. I don't know. Is that, is that a that... different shot? Not sure. Interesting. Well, it was called wide, and the Masters take it as we check in now with Cameron Blackwood standing by with Andre and Matt. Thanks, Michelle. Andre, playing from behind most of the match, but at the end change, it looks like you guys came out with a completely different energy. What was said? Uh, we, we thought we were executing pretty well. They were playing very well in the first half. They got a couple lucky breaks there, so we knew if we hang in there and play our game, it's going to be a close one. But uh, Matt and I were pretty good competitors. We knew we could get it through. We had the confidence, and uh, we pulled a close one. These guys played a very good match as well. Matt, emotions running high down here right now, but this is a pressure moment. It's to get into the finals. How do you say mentally locked in? No, it's just, you know, play point by point, use your energy, feed off of it. We had a rough start in the women's match, so, you know, we needed to get our energy up, so Hayden was chatting a little bit at me, so I said, all right, I'll react, and let's have some fun with it. <laughs> there, just put a point on the
board, Michelle, back to you. Cameron, thanks. These teams are evenly matched in terms of their dupers. It's very close, but take a look at how the teams stack up. Matt Wright, number five. Andre Dasku, number three. And they're playing like it, too, on their side. Team duper, 25.29. That is the universal rating for players. Go ahead and check that out. Leia Jansen, Annalie Waters, James Ignatowicz, Hayden Patrickwin boasting some pretty good dupers of their own. Annalie Waters, of course, the women's number one rated duper ranking. And she's playing like it too, Adam. Yes, and I wanted to mention at the end of that men's match, it might be awkward or uncomfortable to see a 46-year-old man talking <laughs> smack at the net to a 16-year-old boy, <laughs> but Hayden has opened up that can of worms. He has, he has the swag, he has the interviews, he makes comments about his confidence, so he, this is a big moment where I'll out here in competitors, age does not matter, so can he respond in this mixed doubles match? <laughs> Pickleball truly is for everyone, and you got to love the energy. That's what we love so much about Major League Pickleball, right? The camaraderie, the intensity that comes, whether it's on the court or from the sideline. To your point, Adam, Matt Wright received a verbal warning, according to Cameron Blackwood, getting feisty down courtside. Matt and Hayden were going at it. <laughs> Sounds like there were some uh, trouble brewing off the court for both sides. This is going to be a testy mixed doubles round as we progress to the mixed doubles matchup. Remember, the coin toss, New Jersey, they won. They chose to react despite having put their men's doubles team out first, as Cameron Blackwood shared with us earlier. So the mashers, looks like they're going with Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright, special friends on and off the court, as you say, Adam. <laughs> and they will match up against the New Jersey Fives, Hayden Patrickwin and Annalie Waters. That's an interesting matchup for the Fives. I would think they would save Annalie Waters for the fourth game. What do you think, Cameron? Well, it's interesting because this duo of Annalie Waters and Hayden Patrickwin, it's almost as if they kind of split, right, in terms of where they put their power. But I will say Hayden Patrickwin, a testament to how well he has been playing, is the fact that Annalie Waters at times has almost relegated to him, given him more space on the court in specific moments. That's how well he's playing. So, hey, you want to get back on top? This is a good way to go with Annalie Waters and Hayden Patrick Quinn, but also the continuity on the other side. Okay, well, the way it came off courtside, according to Cameron, was that Matt Wright was challenging Hayden Patrickwin, saying, I just schooled you in men's. Why don't you play me in mixed? And perhaps that is influencing Why? the decision <laughs> to play each other here in mixed doubles. And, of course, Annalie Waters, she's not like any other female counterpart in mixed. She takes up a lot more court and is almost like playing with another guy. She <laughs> likes playing guys in singles, doubles, whatever. And I tell you what, Matt Wright, you know, 46 years old, probably doesn't have the Game foot speed three, he once did, in. but that man has some mental zero, warfare, zero. and he uses it to his advantage. Well, and I will say, too, historically, there's been some warfare between Matt, Lucy, and Annalie Waters and whoever she's been playing alongside, too. So some extra sauce on this one, no doubt. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Great insight, courtside. One, zero. From Cameron. Current pro on tour, L. Hayden Patrickwin coming out early with Annalie Waters. I wonder how Annalie Waters feels about being Turn in the mix one. of the crossfire between those two. Oh, loves she loves it. it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt. <laughs> it fuels her game. She has said it so many times before. When she gets chirped, she rises to the occasion. 16 years old and a sensation on tour. Well, uh, every now and then, Cam and I talk at the same time, one, but that two. time we said the exact same thing, so <laughs> she loves it. And that is a fact. So not shy to bring it in terms of her own voice on the court. Lob just back for Kovalova. Is that the right shot to hit at that moment? 
We've gotten to that twice now, just in this early stage. It feels a maybe a bit excessive, but. Ooh, net bounce. Annalie Waters will take it. No apologies there. Yeah, I mean, and their competitors are 5'6 and 5'7, so yeah. a, a lob can be a decent option. But when, when you have the power of these two, when you do get a paddle on the ball, it's tough. So double-edged sword for sure. Just wide for Annalie Waters. Milwaukee trails by three. Two, five. good ball by Annalie Waters right there. It's so fun to watch her feet work. Every single time that ball is on the paddle of her opponent, watch her split step. It's so rhythmic. Patrick Quinn catching Matt Wright, staring down a little extra on that one. <laughs> this is, this is, this is fun. Yes, it is good stuff. And, and Annalie Waters, as you mentioned, with the foot speed, doesn't have the tennis background as a lot of these players because of her age, but a phenomenal soccer player. So the feet and the hand-eye coordination are there for Annalie Waters. Yeah, Waters was invited to play professionally at age 12 for a pro team over in Germany and ended up choosing pickleball, was the youngest pro on tour at just 12 years old. Unbelievable story and it's turned out to be quite a fruitful career for her. It's also said she might make seven figures this year according to her camp. Wouldn't surprise me. Sounds about right. The fives on top by five. Can't believe she missed it. Gotta be careful trying to keep Annalie Waters back. She moves forward so nicely. Uh, more spin, a little less pace can be a good option because she is on it. too easy and it keeps getting feistier and feistier. Man, we gotta get this man mic'd up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be entertaining? Just trying to think about the combined ages on the court right now between Nine, these two four. teams. The total of Waters and Patrick Quinn younger than the age of Matt Wright. Definitely a, a fives on their toes, mashers on their heels early in this match. It's a really nice shot from Lucy Kovalova, reaching in to be able to control that as it's coming cross court and still keep it within that line to line shot. Not easily done. That's a great contact from Kovalova. Yep, and she does take that ball cross court in middle quite often. So to put it on the backside of Hayden Patrick, Patrick Quinn is phenomenal job by Lucy. Same girl, unfortunately misses the easy ball on the next one. That's pickleball. And one minute. Score is off on the screen, and we are now at 11. The fives, the first team to get there. Seems like they'll run away with this one, but stay tuned to find out if they will.
and Hayden Patrickwin up by six in this first of two mixed doubles games in the best three out of four match. What a lot there. Saw it a couple times, didn't work. That time, it did. From Kovalova. Yeah, and she had all her momentum forward, taking their time away, reaching into the kitchen, and taking the lob out of the air, which is absolutely crucial. Can't believe she missed the backhand chance. Waters and Patrick Quinn. She can't because she was so almost too early on that. You saw her paddle fully pushed out into the kitchen. times now where Lucy Kovalova just hasn't had her body in the right position because she has a huge two-hander, absolutely huge, but if she can't get her arms fully extended, she goes to the one-hander and that is not her best counter. Watch the words. Time in, 13-6. I think somebody just got a verbal warning. Matt Wright, who's surprised. <laughs> oh, Hayden Patrick win, finds the baseline. Yes, yeah, so good by him as Lucy thinks that he's gonna try to body her up. He goes to the middle. And yes, verbal warning by Matt Wright and then Johnny Goldberg saying, don't ever change, Matt. <laughs> he's still in the air of our official right now. That's so good. Well, yeah, Bob Swisshelm just kind of sitting there taking it as Matt Wright had a few words for him. Too good. Hayden Patrick when jumping onto the scene in 2022. Took down Rafa Hewitt in the Mesa Open and came on the map. The Milwaukee Mashers are in some trouble here in this mixed doubles matchup. Crowd has been awesome all weekend long, though. Such a fun event to watch. And Adam, as you've seen the sport grow and as you've witnessed Major League Pickleball take its trajectory. To the serve, what is it from a fan perspective that makes this one of a kind? It's just one word, it's energy. The energy is different here at MLP, there is no question. Time in, 14 6. Into the net for Kovalova. Yeah, and that's really been the issue right now is Kovalova and her ability to handle the pace of her opponents. She is a quality counterattacker. Unfortunately, she has not shown a lot of that ability so far in this match. She just slid an extra half a foot to the left to open up that forehand instead on the counter. Still hope on the side of Milwaukee, but not a lot of time or space to go just back for Kovalova. She thought she got it. Yeah, Matt's reaction uh, makes me think she did not. <laughs> Even though Lucy was hoping and praying. It's a great dink right there from Lucy Kovalova. Almost becomes a hybrid in terms of a speed up up at the kitchen line cross court ball. Yeah, not easy to get Annalie Waters off balance, but she does so there. turning point for Kovalova, you had been mentioning that that one hand backhand counter wasn't going her direction. She earned one there. Let's see if she can find either the two hand or another. Yeah, you're right, Cameron. Sometimes it just takes one. A uh, couple misses, maybe even a few misses. You get one and you hit it like you want to, and that will just springs board you forward to uh, have a few more of those quality counter attacks. Oh, big 
swing from Emily Waters, who does not hesitate to call a timeout. Milwaukee climbing within five. Is there a comeback brewing on championship court? Stay tuned to find out if the Milwaukee Mashers can come back in this one. Is here, and this is not to point out any ageism, but Annalie Waters and Hayden Patrick win a combined age of 33. They are 16 and 17 years old. Kovalova and Wright, a little bit more experience on their side. Not to throw that out there, throw them under the bus, but more so to point out how young and talented Annalie Waters and Hayden Patrick win are. And did you just see that? Lucy Kovalova looked to the other side, pointed across to Hayden Patrick Quinn, and blew him a kiss. <laughs> oh, yeah. The spice is heating up. So is the are the hands of pa Hayden Patrick Quinn. Yeah, that was a big one for Hayden. A couple loose errors in the last minute or two. So to get that exchange against Matt Wright, put him right back into that confidence. Down the middle for Hayden Patrick Quinn, who is marching off the court. Oh yeah, needing some exchanges and the refs are talking it over. I'm not sure what was said. Oh, oh I, I think you could tell. Yeah, I, I, I didn't hear it, but I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, that was a, a warning there for him. All right, we're issuing a blue card yeah. and fives for unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, I saw that coming. Thickens. Hayden Patrick Quinn takes a blue card. That is a technical warning. Look at James just chuckling in the background. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> loving it. The players, the fans. Consider yourself warned on the side of the fives. James Blake looking on as one of the owners of the Milwaukee Mashers. Got it. The team in blue. two-hander I'm looking for for Lucy. Use the length, the extension in the arms. You see the power she gets when she whips through that ball. Well done, Lucy. She's going to need a couple more. Yeah. Hayden Patrick Quinn all over it. Waters and Patrick Quinn. Two points.
point shy of taking a 2-1 lead on Milwaukee. They won't do it there. Kovalova and Wright still have life on their side. 
Well, we just were feeling confident against uh, Matt and Lucy, so that's what we figured we would do. And when emotions are running hot down here, we saw a blue card issued. How do you make sure you just stay mentally locked in and not let that overtake the game? Yeah, well, I feel like when tension's high, you either rise to the occasion or you don't, and I feel like me and Big H did. Um, it can get chirpy in MLP, and I think uh, that make, that's what makes it fun, but it can get a little intense. But I just want to shout out my dad and my grandma. I know they love that matchup, so I'm glad we could take it home for them. Can't wait to celebrate with you guys later. <laughs> okay, we're next right after this. Mish, right up back up to you. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Wow, that was a fun match, matchup to watch. Annalie Waters' grandparents were engaged. We were engaged. That was fun. So now we move to the next mixed doubles matchup. It is Leia Jansen, 30 years old. She turned pro in 2021. One of the veterans of the sport. She resides in Austin, Texas, a now hotbed for many of the pros on tour. Her partner, James Ignatowicz, they will square off against Callie Joe Smith and Andre Dascu. James Ignatowicz was also entertained by what we just saw on championship court. He was interacting and engaged the entire way through from the sideline. What do you see in the partnership of Leia and James? Uh, well, I see a lot of firepower. James Ignatowicz, uh, self-proclaimed top three in mixed doubles. Uh, uh, shocking that he would make a self-proclamation like that. But, yeah, so uh, absolute firepower from the fives. And actually, my pick to click is from the Milwaukee Mashers and Andre Dayescu. We need to say his name a lot. He needs to impose his will. He needs to use his length and be aggressive if the Mashers want to take this one down. Well, and it's going to be important for Callie Jo Smith currently on screen as she is going to be shifting from the left to the right side of the court. She doesn't often do it alongside Lucy Kovalova in women's doubles, but right now playing alongside Andre Dayescu, she's going to be playing that right. Going to have to find some offense from there. Yes, and a big factor as well. I think that's a good point, Cam. Callie Smith, an absolute physical presence out there. Can her power and her movement and athleticism carry the mashers in this matchup? It's a must-win situation for Milwaukee in the blue as they will face elimination if they lose this final mixed doubles game. If they win, they will go to a dream breaker. This is how everything works here in Major League Pickleball. 12 teams, each in premier and challenger levels. They're playing separate schedules, but every team owner will get a chance to play in each level, which will determine who ends up where in 2024. Teams feature two men and two women. There are two seasons in 2023, uh, composed of three events each, January through June. This is the culmination of the first season. Then we will, of course, start season two, September through December. There is a redraft happening in July. All the Challenger League teams currently will flip up to Premier level. They will draft the players of their choosing, the top 12 teams that remain will be in the premier level come 2024. $5 million in prize money. That is huge for the sport. More on that in just a moment. First serve underway. Adam said, first and foremost, can Callie Jo Smith impose her will, be a physical presence right off the go? That forehand working for her. or his foot speed or his hand speed. That's a good question. The right question. he taps across the kitchen. But that's one of his favorite speed ups right there on the forehand side, that short hop off the bounce and the ability to use that wrist and be very deceptive. Adam has mentioned it multiple times how he can move it around. Callie Smith will take back the serve and a one point lead early. there and to touch on what Cam said, the James Ignatowicz forehand speed up to the middle, Andre likes to sit backhand on his counter, so that could be an issue for the mashers. Oh, oh worked that time. Right there. All right, that okay. Right on 
Mr. Day ask you. Uh, How do you fold that one out of your back pocket? A split Four second one. time. Impressive for Day ask you. the side of Milwaukee, what a lead. Well, and because of that, that's gonna force Dayescu to have to find success on that backhand side of James Ignatowicz through those counters. Did if he were going forehand, he could pull that towards Leah Jansen. We could be Did seeing our first dream breaker here on championship court if this no, she keeps up. challenge your own call, okay? Yeah, new rule, you cannot challenge your own call. Point. There was an issue whether Leia Jansen actually initially called the ball out or not. You have to make a clear call. Uh, so uh, that was the confusion. That's why the referee was asking. So interesting situation. And just another little bit of drama in there. Why not? <laughs> Thank you for clarifying, Adam. Football. Big angle from Ignatowicz and a bigger football. Ooh. Well, we saw the foot funnel on JW as he's fully extending to the middle. That was just an easy overhead for James. Very surprising that his foot went into the kitchen on such an easy ball. Down the line for Leia Jansen. Too easy. Gotta update the score a little bit here. Right now. Great read from Leia. Catching Andre looking to be aggressive in the middle. Just back for Dayescu. Four, six. It's a really nice drop from James Ignatowicz. So much topspin off that two-hand backhand drop. So to be able to have the contact to add more topspin, doubling that up and actually turning it the opposite direction, it has to be a perfect contact. Just back for Ignatowicz. Milwaukee takes a two-point lead. Seven, five. Long drives from each fella. Lee Waters giving some Six, coaching seven. and instruction on the side of the New Jersey Fives. You see her there. Right, loose, loose three points in a row. Two missed seven, drives seven. and now a missed return from Callie Smith. Can't afford that. seen her be this active in terms of really protecting her side of the court doing a very beautiful job. Goes right at Ignatowicz straight ahead. Callie Smith has been a difference maker in this recent stretch. Oh, she loves the challenge. I've played on her MLP team before. She loves taking it to the fellas. And of course, the fans love it when the ladies light up the guys. <laughs> and then she goes middle. Well, and that spells even more trouble. She just steals one away. This doesn't come off cleanly of her paddle, but nonetheless, that two-hand backhand flip right through the middle. Backhand count 
gets her to almost the same spot for Callie Smith. Well, you hit on it, Michelle. It was the exact same spot. Wait for James Ignatowicz. He might try to go up the line after the end change. So how about that? Milwaukee, the first team to 11. We could be having our first street breaker here in San Clemente. Please. Back in San Clemente for the second semifinal match. Time in. The Seattle Pioneers oh, awaiting seven. their opponent. New Jersey with a 2-1 lead in the series in terms of games, but up in this fourth mixed doubles game, they could tie it up here. Oh, Callie Smith, she's been so hot. She just barely misses that one. Oh, yeah, I like it. I, I have no problem whatsoever. You can't make them all. Obviously, confuse your opponents a little bit. So, uh, Callie, keep firing away. Keep playing big. I was wondering if there might be a switch here, here after the end change. Maybe you go to Andre Deescu just a time or two more than Callie Smith, just because she, she is in such a good rhythm right now. I will recall. Yeah, you're hot, you're hot. 12, eight. Change the spot, see what, see if it helps. Seven, the for Callie Point. Smith. Nine. Here come the New Jersey Fives. Nine, 12. I mentioned that non-dominant foot in the transition zone. That's exactly where he targets on Leia Jansen, and he's rewarded with the point. Well, that's really hard, too, because if you want to drop against this team of the Bastards, you're definitely going to look to drop to Callie Jo Smith because Andre Jescu in his length will take that ball out of the air. It's going to cause just a little bit more damage through the transition zone. She just, she just doesn't give a dang. I mean, she is pulling triggers, middle, up the line, at the, even the body of James Ignatowicz, Callie Smith, playing huge. single one of these counters. Look at this. Look how far he has to shift. I tell you what, Callie Smith does not miss a workout Wednesday. Look at those traps. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. She is a physical force out there. She can hit the ball way harder than me, that's for sure. Time out cold on the court. We will step aside as well. It's a thriller here in San Clemente. Don't go away.
Crowd is getting rowdy here in San Clemente, California, just outside the beautiful facilities. The Lifetime Athletic Country Club, Andre Deascu. Back to serve, looking to even out the series here. A must-win situation for Milwaukee. One. That's what know. I was impressed of. The, you know, that last ball pretty standard for James, but to have the reach to get that first ball and pick it off was very well done. Oh, James Ignatowicz comes up big again. They're now only down by three. Dangerous for Milwaukee. Yeah, you're spot on. James Ignatowicz just dropping that paddle head down on the forehand side to steal one away. Jansen attacking the forehand side of Andre Deescu in the middle of that point. It got him back to the baseline. Oh, just wide for Deescu. And he was com James was completely beat. I love the shot from Andre Deescu, but once again, the length and athleticism of James Ignatowicz on full display. for James Ignatowicz. Smith and Deescu with a chance to close. But that's the pressure and the length of Andre Deescu. That's why it's so hard to drop to him. of opportunities, but I think that was a force. She was several feet off of the kitchen line with her momentum going backwards, so probably just dink that ball and wait for a better opportunity. Maintaining your out call. The fives are challenging the out call. All right, the uh, fives are challenging the out call. The Milwaukee Mashers. Based upon the rally, Leia the Jansen current score is 18 Seem to be solo in that position of just <laughs> overruling it up. Why not? I mean, you're in your fourth game, right? Might as well use them. They had most of them available. So it's this could like be a timeout, right? Yeah. You get a chance to still go back to the, the rest of your team. Maybe you assess a few different adjustments. So even though you're really not challenging the call itself, it gives you that extra timeout. Yeah, and I, I didn't see a lot of initial body language that led me to think uh, that ball might have dropped in. So we'll just have to see. So the promotion and relegation system, we talked about it a lot. The accumulation of event points is After putting review, the ownership groups in position for the, the premier level here. was overturned. Oh. oh. And she says, give me that ball back. Lay a chance and says, bring wow. it over. Bring that ball back over. A swift turn of events, Leia Jansen. Wow, she was confident. She walked right to the bench and said, challenge. Let have another look. You now have one remaining. The, bring the ball back to me? Yeah. Give me that ball. That's hilarious. Bob Swissell, our lead referee for this semifinal match. A huge call. 17, 14, 18, 13. Two very, very different scores. That's a big difference. Time in. 17. Yeah! Daskew all over that. Brings the serve and point back on their side. Three points away from forcing a dream breaker. 18 14. Big swing from Callie Joe 
Smith, she hit that one with a purpose. Uh, absolutely she did. That thing came off her paddle like a rocket. Again, the ability to manipulate her wrist, turn that ball up the line and swipe across. Not much Ignatowicz can do. 19, 14. Yes, I've ne never played James Ignatowicz in a tournament, but I have been on the court with him plenty, and the ball comes off his paddle pretty special. Oh, the fives are going away. Danescu tries to get out of the way and instead takes the heat. You know, there's a lot of advantages to being that tall, mm -hmm. and there are some disadvantages. Yes, <laughs> I say it all the time, big man, big target. You know, he, might, he might reach in the kitchen and light me up a few times, but I got a good shot to tag him once or twice as well. <laughs> wow, Callie Jo Smith, you guys called it. She was the X Factor you identified in addition to Daskew being rock solid, and she has been. Yeah, and I think it was, it almost seemed like an half committed drive from Leah Jansen. Not sure if she changed her mind or what. Either way, she left that high, and Callie Smith puts it down.
lots of cash money on the line for these individual players. The Mashers looking to stay alive in this series against the Fives, who have a one-game edge on them. If the Milwaukee Mashers can finish this and take this mixed doubles game, we will go to a fifth deciding game. That is a Toyota Prius Dream Breaker singles format. We'll get to that in just a moment, but for now, traditional scoring both sides, Leah Jansen serves. Yes, great counter from Andre Deescu, and I think Leia Jansen was doing the right thing by sliding to her right just a hair too late, though. He walks back to the baseline and blows off his hand a little bit because that thing is on fire right <laughs> now. <laughs> Dropping that paddle down, adding plenty of topspin and fighting the sideline. Team 20. There's no way that thing is circular. Game point number three for Milwaukee, looking to force a dream breaker.
Back in San Clemente and here with a fifth deciding game. It is what we call the Toyota Prius Dream Breaker. If the match is tied 2-2, which it is, we will now move on to a singles match where the players will rotate after four points. They get to pick their rotations and they will go four points per each rotation. Don't worry, we'll explain it as we get through it. As we check in now with Cameron Blackwood standing by courtside. Things with Shell. Callie, what an incredible match this was. To keep you guys in it, taking you to a dream breaker, I was telling you before this, you just seemed like a different player. You were not gonna lose this. What's the conversation you had with yourself within your head of saying, we have to take this one? Well, for me, I think there's been a lot of back and forth banter and in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna let the paddle talk today. So let's go, let's go for a big proponent of that. Um, but it's been some great competition, not gonna lie. It's a little fun to hear that too. So uh, it, makes it, it makes it very entertaining. And I just came out and I said, you know what? We're winning this match. We're a great team. Uh, in my opinion, the best team because I love the mashers. So let's go mashers. Uh, any team I play for is gonna be the best. And uh, we gave 100% I think that if, uh, I mean, it's going to be a great match here. I think both teams are playing awesome. So I think both teams need a round of applause from everybody. So this is going to be a fun dream breaker. Let's go. Thanks, Callie. Michelle, back to you. Cameron, thanks so much. We will be back with the singles rotations and how this matchup shakes up. Would it be surprised if Annalie Waters matches up against one of the guys? You don't want to miss it. Callie, please. We'll, we do the lineups one by one. And also, as a reminder, you get one, uh, none of the leftover um, video challenges, free video challenges from the previous games carry over. So you get one free video challenge. You get unlimited, but if you, uh, if you lose a second one, you lose a point. Okay, so the New Jersey Fives declares first. Who is your first player? James. James Ignatowicz is the first player. First player for the Mashers. Sure. Andre Diascu is the first player for the Milwaukee Mashers. Second player for the Fives. Annalie. Annalie Waters is the second player for the Fives. No, me. Callie Jo Smith is the second player for the Mashers. Third player for the Fives. Hayden. Hayden will be the third, and then, and then that makes the fourth one. Would be for my, 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 my mind is blanking. Is Leo, right? Thank you. Okay, your third and fourth. Um, I will play against Hayden. Okay, so Lucy Kovalova is the third. And then Matt Wright. And then Matt Wright will be the fourth. Thank you. Welcome back. We are just setting the matchups here in singles. Remember, the New Jersey Fives won the toss. They chose to react when it came to mixed doubles. So now the tables turn when it comes to singles. The Mashers get to be the team to react to the order that the New Jersey Fives select. Typically, they go with Annalie Waters first in their batting order, but the usual strategy is when you are the team that chooses your order first, it's top of the batting order. You put your strongest batter out first, and what else are you expecting on the side of the Fives? I mean, you could also think of it like chess, though, at some point, too. If they're anticipating that they're gonna put out Annalie Waters, maybe they switch it up. Maybe they try and find a different matchup. So honestly, at this point with the Dream Breaker, it really could go any direction in terms of the matchups. So we do have the matchups from Cameron Blackwood courtside. James Ignatowicz will start the order for the fives. Then it will be Annalie Waters, Hayden Patrick Quinn, and Leia Jansen. Here's the matchup on the side of the Masters who they decided to counter the fives with. Andre Deascu will match up against James Ignatowicz. 
Callie Smith will match up against Annalie Waters. That's going to be an interesting one. And Hayden Patrickwin will match up against Lucy Kovalova, which you would call maybe the sacrificial lamb. And then Leah Jansen gets Matt right. That's clearly the edge that the mashers felt they would have in that one. Although, I don't know, Leah Jansen, Matt Wright, that's not necessarily an advantage. It doesn't matter no. what the uh, gender order is there. So, we will be back and bring you the matchups. It is one of the best parts of Major League Pickleball. Stay with us. Tennis Channel's coverage of Major League Pickleball is brought to you in part by Knock Around Sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank, and by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Back in San Clemente, California, time now to present you with the Toyota Prius Dream Breaker. It is singles, each player Rotation will meet for a total of four points. Then the next layer of competitors will come out. According to the batting order, we told you before the break, right now it's James Ignatowicz against Andre Deescu. Milwaukee will serve first. Games to 21, win by two, rally scoring. Right off the bat, Deescu showing his prowess first. Yes, and the New Jersey Fives on paper, the number one singles team in MLP. They lost earlier to the ATX Pickleballers and then Daytona, they lost to the Hard Eights. Anything can happen in this format. Another miss for James Ignatowicz gives Andre Daskew a two point advantage. Two more points to play in this rotation. three errors for James Ignatowicz. What's wild too is the Mashers have yet to play a dream breaker since Mesa. They didn't have one in Daytona and they haven't had one here in San Clemente. There's a big counter punch from James Ignatowicz. He gets one out of the four, but that's a big lead for Milwaukee and they need the cushion because guess what? The best female singles player in the world, Annalie Waters, is out next against Callie Smith, who, according to Cameron Blackwood, was adamant she matched up against Annalie. Annalie Waters. 
Waters finding a passing shot after a beautiful drive down the line. This is what makes her so good. Not only is she great from the baseline, one of the best movers in the game. see early Callie Smith targeting the middle of the court a lot and we saw Leia Jansen kind of give the blueprint of how to play Annalie Waters in a recent tournament tournament Callie Smith must have been watching three. Callie Smith wanted this matchup she got it with a deep return there yeah and the reason you see that middle is Annalie Waters has a little bit of a harder time going backhand oh, line to line away with a crucial three of the available four points. We move on to the next rotation. Hayden Patrickwin and Lucy Kovalova. Kovalova's maybe the identifiable sacrificial lamb for the Mashers. Yes, and she's several inches taller than Hayden, but I think at this point, Hayden, he plays well in all three aspects of the game. Big swing there. And it, uh, you know, as I mentioned, them being so good on paper and having such quality results throughout their careers in singles, uh, it makes a little sense that Milwaukee might want to do something different as opposed to just macking, matching up strength to strength. Two points for Hayden. If Kovalova can just find a way to get one, that would be huge for her side. The great ball from Lucy Kovalova. It all started with the return that found the baseline. It set her up to get to the kitchen line and be the aggressor. Cross court winner for Hayden Patrick Quinn. Yes, and I was uh, coaching Mary Brasha in Daytona when she was playing Hayden Patrick Quinn to attack the backhand and approach. That's exactly what Lucy does. But Hayden Patrick went up to the task with a great passing shot. Seven, five. Oh. Oh. Leah Jansen's ball was called four, wide by Matt six. Wright as we move into the next rotation. Five, These two will go for four points. Leah Jansen challenging call. the out call. Well, she's one for one. <laughs> she was adamant earlier. She's adamant this time. The so uh, there might be something to this. The out call. As a result of the rally, we are at 6 7. Strategically speaking, Adam, explain some of the differences when we move to singles and for some of these traditional doubles players, what they have to adjust to here quickly in this Dream Breaker format. Right, so I always talk about tennis, pickleball, they're always connected, but especially in the singles game. Serve, return, ground strokes early in the point are huge with their depth. You can have a couple errors. And when you're in doubles, you only got half the court to cover. So, uh, uh, you know, the going for more is, you don't get as much out of it in singles you can. This is the ball they're challenging. After, after video review, the out call is overturned. <laughs> Leia Jansen, that vision coach, my two goodness, she's on fire. She can see the ball, she can see the lines, she knows exactly what's going on out there. Five Jack Pryor is who Adam is referencing, challenge. Leia Jansen working with the vision coach. As of Daytona Beach, you have MLP. Your video challenge for this game. You have no free video challenges. We will resume play with the fives serving at 8 5. New score 8 5. That's a big swing for the Mashers. But it also means the Mashers lose their own free challenge in this Dream Breaker format. Jansen, talk about a huge shift in momentum. Here it is. Uh, Matt, not a consistent singles player, but I think that shot would have worked on almost anyone. Great job finding the back corner from Leia Jansen. Nine, five. Another clean winner for Leia Jansen.
Jansen. Oh, you gotta love that inside in from Leia Jansen, shifting to the backhand side, opening the forehand, using some deception and power all at the same time. One of the best female players in the world in singles. Just wide that time, can't win them all. Matt Wright by default gets one point of the four available. Leia Jansen winning that rotation 3-1. sends it long, and Ignatowicz needs a big response. He only got one in the first rotation. And Deescu just went full body, right? It's rare to see that hands battle, especially in the game of singles, but you're already seeing it between these two. Yeah, he didn't even consider hitting that ball into space. He locked in on the body of James Ignatowicz, went for it with a pretty quality shot, but James' hands too good. The New Jersey Fives, the first team to 11 as we're back at the top of the order between James Ignatowicz and Andre Deescu. Three more points to be played between these two. Ignatowicz, one of the better single players on the men's side of things, though focusing more on doubles lately. And Michelle, it, I mean, it's just science. Guys have a little more physical strength than the ladies, but I think this pro sport is one of the highest end where the ladies are right there with the guys, and you can see it in this format. You can't blow the ladies off the court. You just can't do it. So very exciting uh, aspect to pickleball. That's a great point by you. What a fun you just catches the sideline. Beautiful job on the backhand volley, putting some side spin on it. That thing was running away from James. Wow, just a simple scoop down the line for James Ignatowicz. Yep, and we're playing with a wiffle ball here. So what tennis ball compresses, you can really just overwhelm people with power. Can't do that on the pickleball court. James, what is he doing? Who knows? <laughs> I don't think he does. No shortage of coffee on his side. Back up to Annalie Waters and Callie Smith. Callie Smith wanted that one. Enthusiastic out call. for Callie Joe to go up against the number one player in the world, Annalie Waters. Waters so beautiful with that two-handed backhand. I mean, that's just mean right there from Annalie Waters. Her ability to still not only find that two-hand backhand, which creates power, but her control to pull that cross court. Finish for Annalie Waters, gets three of the available four. Not much missing from her trophy cabinet. Sorry, we go one more. She got two out of four so far. She has never won an MLP title. This would be huge. And she, there we get the three of the available four. Yeah, for and, and really, I looked a little awkward from Callie Smith there, but she was falling into the kitchen, lost her balance, had to step around it, leaving a massive amount of open court, and Annalie Waters found it. The fives now take a comfortable eight-point lead. Kovalova and Hayden Patrickwin. It from Hayden Patrick Quinn, just waiting for the right opportunity to come to the net. That's one of the biggest elements in the game of singles. If you don't feel like you have the strongest serve slash return, to be able to get up to that net requires a great shot. Yes, exactly right. And the thing is, is if you just frivolously crash forward, especially in this lopsided matchup, you give Kovalova a target to possibly pass you. So hang back, use your movement and athleticism, wait for the right ball to come in, 
is the best option, just like you said, Cam. The Masters trying to figure out the code of the New Jersey Fives, who seem to be running away with this dream breaker, but so fun to watch. My favorite rotations has to be Leia Jansen and Matt Wright. Leia cleaning up. Love to see the ladies taking down some of the guys. No offense, Adam. <laughs> no. Yeah, and, and it, I found myself playing a lot of ladies in the first MLP because Kelly Smith was on my team. So uh, she, she wanted to play the guys, and I was like, sure, I'll play the girls, whatever. <laughs> Just back for Hayden Patrick win. Lucy Kovalova gets one. Yeah, again, very good depth. That's one of the biggest pieces in the game of singles. Great depth of serve, great depth of return. She was going to go cross court with that ball. He was leaning to his forehand. She took it right at his throat instead. Just back. Hayden and Lucy split there too. Two points apiece. Leia Jensen and Matt Wright back out. Last time Leia got three of the four. immediately to the official to inquire whether it was in or out in the MLP format. It's got to be your call. Just wide again for Leia. Two points for Matt Wright. <laughs> his pointing and his let's out. That's out. I mean, it's just, it's pretty comical. Michigan Wolverine tennis player. And that's just pretty footwork right there from Matt Wright, sliding forward up and underneath. Watch this. Keeping those hips turned to be able to create not only power, but deception, that line-to-line -line shot on the two-hand backhand. I mean, three-time all Big Ten, you think he can't slap some ground strokes? <laughs> he knows I what mean, he's come doing. On. Come on. 40, 46 years young. Quite a comeback we've seen so far. Still down five, a ways to go for the Mashers, but a couple of these rotations now swinging in the other direction, this one being a crucial one that was missed in round one. So what would it take for them to turn the tie when you have James Ignatowicz and Annalie Waters waiting on the wings? Well, it's a big point right here uh, for this last one for Matt Wright because the Mashers probably have two of their better options coming up uh, as we had the Hayden Patrick win and Lucy Kovalova previously, which definitely favors the five. So this is a huge point to get within four and then at least get your uh, next two players a crack at getting back in this thing. Everything on the line for both teams. The Mashers with valuable event points. They were not in the top 12 across the entire league when it came to standings and total event points. This run will help them drastically in terms of where they'll land in 2024. Back to singles, though, Matt Wright and Leah Jansen. And Leah gets one. That's a big one. Yeah, it really was, as I mentioned. Matt Wright had a good look up the line. I just don't think he quite got his feet where he needed to be. been going really heavily towards that backhand side of James Ignatovich, expecting the cross-court roll. James got three on Andre last rotation. Here's Andre, he gets two. Yeah, way to attack the ball from Andre. Not the best return from James Ignatovich, and no hesitation from Andre Deescu moving forward with a nice forehand. Some complimentary pickleball right there. You saw the ball sent to the backhand side, then the draw. 
drop to the backhand side. Now it's time to shift. season on the PPA Tour in women's singles. Not one you want to mess with here. Make that seven as of last weekend at San Clemente. And a poetic finish for the New Jersey Fives for the first time ever in this team's history. They are going to the championships to meet the Seattle Pioneers. What a match. What a match is right. Amazing play from the New Jersey Fives. A little anticlimactic there at the end with that out ball on the wide shot, but amazing match overall for sure. I mean, it's so fun to watch all of these athletes get challenged in each of these disciplines, but ultimately just too much pace from the New Jersey Fives. We will chat things over with the New Jersey Fives after this short break and see how they match up against Ben Johns and company. The New Jersey Fives are on to the championship rounds and their hopes for a Monday super final finish still alive as well as we send it down to Cameron Blackwood standing by with the victors. I got to come over here to Leah first because you we talked about having a vision coach there and it's helping you having your brain not work so hard but also you had two calls overturned how much is that helping you on the court I mean I I can see the ball now so I, I see the ball on the other person's paddle I watch it the whole time so yeah I've, I, I was pretty confident in those overturns and Hayden having to go up against Lucy it's a little bit of a different style that the women play versus the men how are you able to get it done yeah, Lee just told me to stay back and hit ground strokes. I never played tennis, so it was a little tough for me, but uh, I made it happen. Speaking of Lee Waters, I heard her getting in your face just a little bit. What was she telling you throughout that dream breaker? Uh, just uh, stay stay aggressive. Don't be tentative. I mean, you know, my, my singles, haven't been playing a lot of singles, and it's just you go out there in the dream breaker and it's like oh wow yesterday I got rocked by jw yesterday and i kind of you know still haven't gotten over that really so i had a little little yips in the singles but you know thankfully we pulled it out and uh, i kind of got carried as usual Annalie, you've won so much even just this year here on the PPA Tour, but how much would this MLP title mean to you today? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. MLP, like I said, is a title I haven't won yet, so making it to this final, especially with this team, we're amazing together. I love all of them, and it's so cool uh, to make it to an MLP final, especially with this team, and hopefully we can win this final and then go to the Super Finals on Monday. Heading up against Ben's team. Any thoughts on that? I'm excited. Ben last night was like, let's go fives. We definitely wanted the 
Ben uh, Anna Lee finals, so we're going to see it. Uh, I'm just excited. Hopefully we get to play against each other in mix and you get to see a little bit of that, but if not, that's great too, and I'm sure uh, my team's just as excited as I am. Thanks, Anna Lee. Michelle, back to you. Cameron, thanks. Wow, what a match. And the New Jersey Fives, are they the team that can dethrone the Seattle Pioneers? So I've got one thing to say. Who better to beat the best man in the world than the best female in the world? They absolutely can win this match. And I can't wait to be back at 430 Pacific for an amazing final. Hey, it's the number one and number two overall draft picks going head to head. We finally have it here in the finale of season one.